Join us as we rise before dawn to rock and roll our way north from Burnett Heads to beautiful Pancake Creek. And yes, it even lives up to its name. We also take a great bush walk to check out the historic Busted Head Lighthouse. Good morning Burnout Heads. It's just after four and this moon is about to set. But the good news for us is the sun's coming up on the other side. We've looked at the conditions and hopefully the weather guys have got it right. And we're going to uh, head down river, out the mouth, turn left and make our way further north to an anchorage at Pancake Creek. That's the plan. Yay, does that mean we get pancakes? If you make them, yes. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Hopefully we might get some fish on the way, we'll see. Let's get that engine started, huh? Just motoring past the uh, sugar terminal. The big shed behind is absolutely stacked with raw sugar. And the Port of Bundaberg now also has a major uh, gyprock uh, plasterboard plant here as well. So not a crazy busy port like uh, Gladstone or Brisbane, but still get a uh, fair sampling of large ships in here to load. I suggest that this mono and the cat down there that are actually anchored in the channel are probably lucky that there aren't any big sugar bulk loaders coming in today. They might get a uh, hurry up from the pilot and the uh, and the tug. We encountered a sizeable stern quarter swell off the coast. This had us rolling a bit while the wind was swinging back and forth across the stern, which made it a bit difficult to fly a headsail at times. See a lot of colour, only feeling blue. There's a lot of colour.
We're approaching Busted Head and pretty windy. We've got about 18, 20 knots at the moment and uh, 1.8 to 2 metres swells. Karen's rocking and rolling there. Sliding down the seats. We're about to go between two sets of rocks. Uh, so we, yes, we do have the engine on. We've got the heads all the way, so we've got nice clear vision. And uh, away we go. We thread our needle through them, around the headland, and then into Pancake Creek for a nice calm anchorage is the theory. Flat now, as pancakes. Yeah, flat as a pancake <laughs> we hope. And we hope that it's not as full as a state school port rack. Yeah. So um, yeah, there could be a number of boats sheltering in there waiting to go south, we're not sure. But we uh, certainly will find out when we get around the corner. However, we were the only ones. Yes. We're the only <laughs> sailboat we've seen today. We saw a trawler when we just left Burnett Heads. We recently saw a fisheries department boat heading uh, south and that's about the extent of it. Yep. A, a couple of ships in the distance that are probably anchored waiting for a glance. But, uh, other it. than that, it's just been us rocking and rolling our way north. Settled in here at the anchorage in Pancake Creek, enjoyed a nice cool ale after the 11 and a half hour sail up the coast from Burnett Heads. And now we've got the full moon just rising over Busted Head uh, beside the lighthouse. Absolutely gorgeous. There's actually a lunar eclipse later on tonight. Not sure that we'll be able to capture that from the boat though because we're still moving a fair bit in here. After 11 and a half hours rocking and rolling from Burnett Heads up here to Pancake Creek yesterday, so lovely to be sitting in uh, flat water. Went to bed early, got a great night's sleep, and now it's a beautiful day here in Pancake Creek. We're uh, probably about 20 k's north of the town of 1770, and this anchorage can only be reached by boat. So there's no roads in here, no tracks, no anything. And it's just a great stop on the way up north. Wind's blowing nicely, the sun's out, the tide's actually ripping out. You can see the current there, hopefully. There's so much current on the uh, outgoing tide that I've actually put the fishing line in the water. The dive bo board's working well and the lure's bouncing around there. We know there are mackerel in this creek. We've caught them here before, so. The wind's uh, got our wind generator going nicely, the sun's on our solar panels so all our batteries are being recharged and so are the crew. Just having a lazy day today. 
We're going for a walk on the sandbar that's uh, gradually emerging as the tide drops. So uh, mid-afternoon we plan on getting over there and going for a walk with one of our patrons, Karen and Rob, believe it or not, off uh, a boat behind us there, chill. They're sharing the anchorage with us and we've organised to uh, drop over and go for a bit of a walk and explore on the sandbar later on. Once anchored in Pancake Creek, it is tradition to feast on a stack of pancakes and then walk them off to a visit to the beautifully restored but still operational Busted Head Lighthouse. So when in Pancake Creek... We have pancakes. Pancakes are served, honey. Oh, they look good. We were sheltering from some pretty ugly seas and blustery winds, but there is always something great to discover when we stop off. This is an area that has remained unchanged since Captain James Cook sailed here over two centuries ago and named the headland after a bustard that was caught and eaten by the landing crew. There are only two ways to reach Busted Head Lighthouse, either by your own boat anchored in Pancake Creek and taking the 5.8 kilometre return walking trail, or by a lark from the township of 1770, a 20 kilometre adventure to the lighthouse. This remote destination has much to offer the visitor, great fishing and crabbing, beach walks on the sandbars at low tide, and the main attraction, the historic Busted Head Lighthouse. Easily found from the main beach at the National Park sign, you can pick up the track through the bush, which will come out to a patch of forest that's been invaded by salt water and where all the trees have died. Cross the moonscape in a straight line, making for the bush ahead. Once back in the bush, helpful National Park signs point you in the right direction. Good morning, everyone. Well, this morning we are going for a walk to the Busted Head Lighthouse. Yeah, it's uh, going to be high enough hopefully for us to get some internet reception. <laughs> I've got the laptop in the back. back. That's Rob's um, first. <laughs> yep, it is. We've got, a, we've got a YouTube episode ready to go up and haven't been able to get enough um, mobile, cell, whatever you want to call it, service to um, actually do any internet at all. But it's a nice walk up here. We've been up to the lighthouse before great spot. It's got lots of history too. Yep, so while I'm sitting on the computer hopefully uploading an episode, uh, Karen will be shooting some footage to show you around. So all this section of the walk is under the light tree canopy. So while it's quite a warm day, there's 15 to 20 knots blowing outside. So we're still getting a breeze through the trees here. 
and just having to walk in patches of sun at this stage. We're just going for a leisurely stroll, taking it easy and enjoying the uh, enjoying the Aussie bush. We can hear the breaking surf from here. Lovely. Sound of surf is certainly beautiful, isn't it? However, when you are out there on the water and you're travelling between the point here and the rocks, it's a bit disconcerting when you hear that surf. <laughs> the thing about lighthouses is they always put them up on the top of headlands, so... Yep, it's a climb. Now we're doing the uphill. There's in the sun, of course, so rehydrate. Three people drown, a mother slits her own throat, a woman is abducted, and a young boy is shot. What do these tragedies have in common? The busted head lighthouse. But these tragic stories would have been lost had there not been for another story of love and dedication to an outpost that had almost been forgotten. While its beam had provided light, hope and safety to shipping traffic for over 130 years, time had not been so kind in return. The plight of the historic lighthouse at Busted Head would have ended tragically if it was not for the crusade of Stuart and Shirley Buchanan. The once beautiful and well-maintained signal of light that had kept so many sailors alive was dying. The area was so derelict that the state government had decided to bulldoze the historic site. After their anger subsided, determination set in to save and restore the station, but their pleas to state government for help fell on deaf ears. However, they received a $140,000 Commonwealth Heritage Grant and their dream to restore the lighthouse took shape. Today, for a small fee, you can get a guided tour of the lighthouse and the outbuildings. The restored head lightkeeper's cottage is now a museum with quality artifacts and memorabilia such as lenses, bulbs, burners, model ships and the first superintendent's telescope, scrimshaw on whale's teeth, original oil paintings and historic photographs. And to top off the tour, you experience a magnificent ocean panorama from the lighthouse itself. Every evening from 1868, a vigil unbroken for 118 years, a lightkeeper would climb the steps of the busted headline house and light the lamp, ensuring the safe passage of vessels navigating Queensland's dangerous rock and reef strewn coast. And then, every two consecutive hours, he would crank the handle to ensure the light kept shining. In the early days, it took three families to look after the lighthouse. Busted Head Lighthouse Station has been the scene of repeated tragedy throughout its history, certainly more than any other lighthouse in Australia. Death by murder, accident, illness and suicide has plagued many of its keepers who suffered the hardship of isolation. While the light still shines brightly across the sea every evening, the dark history of this remote outpost still intrigues all who come to visit. We would like to say a huge thank you to our virtual crew members who sail along with us on our Dreamtime through Patreon. Knowing you think enough of what we do to sign on gives us a massive boost. Your support has encouraged and helped us to invest in a whole bunch of new equipment to improve our shows. If you'd like to find out how you could join the Dreamtime crew too and get special access and other benefits, click across to our Patreon page through the link in the episode description below. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please click that button. It really helps us, and it's totally free. If you'd like to be notified when new episodes are published, hit that bell button as well. Thanks for watching, and we'll look forward to you joining us on the next episode of Dreamtime Sale.